الحمد لله رب العالمين الرحمن الرحيم مالك يوم الدين إياك نعبد وإياك نستعين اهدنا الصراط المستقيم صراط الذين أنعمت عليهم غير المغضوب عليهم ولا الضالين آمين All praise belongs to Allah, the Lord of the world, the benefit and the merciful. Master of the day of judgment, you alone we serve, you alone we ask for help. Guide us to the straight path, the path of those upon whom you have bestowed favors, not the path upon whom thy wrath is brought down, nor of those who go astray. On behalf of the owner of the chat room is the Quran or Bible, Final Testaments for Mankind, Brother Abu Qasim 91, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh, brothers and sisters in Islam, and brothers and sisters in humanity, may the peace and blessings of the Almighty be with us all. We are about to commence a debate that was carried for today at uh, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time in this uh, chat room, 8 p.m. Uh, uh, Greenwich Mean Time. I would ask the admins to um, uh, dot everyone in the room. Uh, except the admins themselves and also uh, the debaters and the timekeepers. The timekeeper for this uh, debate uh, would be Brother Elmus and uh, uh, seated by Brother Abu Qasim and also the, the um, well there are no texts required by the two debaters. The debaters are Osiris Isis and uh, uh, Brother Strait underscore part underscore one. So I will pause for a moment so that we can duck the room and I would leave the mic for a moment. Assalamu alaikum. Mic is free. Is uh, the gentleman I'm debating, is this the dude that, uh, that uh, challenged me? Is this the dude that challenged me? Uh, yes, I'm sorry about that. So um, the straight part, uh, uh, Nick the dude has changed his Nick to the straight part for this uh, particular debate with Cyrus. So it's the same guy. Don't worry about it. Everything will be fine. So um, I'm going to duck the room. Uh, if you want to come in as an admin, and uh, you may do so now, you will be not dotted um, in the room. If you uh, come on, yes, okay, Brother Maher, undot yourself and dot everyone else except uh, Brother Elmos and the two debaters and the admins. Okay, so we'll wait for that to be done and then we will commence with the debate. Uh, the topic for debate today is, is, could you post for us please, uh, Brother Yes. The debate question is, Adam and Eve were created by God. For the affirmative is straight underscore part underscore one. And for the negative will be Osiris dash Isis. The, op the format of the debate will be opening statement five minutes for each person. Five minutes. Time will be kept by Brother Elmos. We suggest that the debaters keep an eye on the text uh, on the screen and the timer on the screen. Uh, the presentation will follow by each person alternatively, uh, 15 minutes each for the presentations. Then the rebuttal, rebuttals will be 10 minutes each, alternating again, and then a closing statement of 5 minutes each. We will remind you of the time amounts as we introduce you for your turn in the debate uh, sequence. After the debate is finished, there will be a question and answer period, six, a total of six questions. The questions will also alternate between straight underscore part and Osiris Isis. Uh, after the first question, the question will be allowed one minute. The questioners will be able to um, uh, 
present their question in one minute time and the answers would be two minutes in duration. So we have six questions. The total time for this segment will be 18 minutes. So we would like the questions to alternate. If you have a question for Osiris, then the next question should be for the straight path and so on. And after that, uh, we will close the remarks and open the room uh, for discussion based on debate. So to start off with, um, since uh, the, uh, there's, uh, we have a choice here. We have straight path to go first or Osiris Isis to go first. Who would prefer to go first? Um, would you like to make a decision among yourselves? We have praise. Yeah, if I can go first, it doesn't mind. Okay, so we'll have straight path going first, and Osiris Isis will go second. So let's start the tape going. Let's start the debate, brothers and sisters. Slam. You can invite your friends to the room. They will come in on. They will come in on a red dot, and they will remain on a red dot um, uh, in the room. After the debate, then of course we'll have comments and you know discussion in the chat room. Again, the topic is Adam and Eve were created by God. Uh, for the affirmative, will be straight underscore part who is going to start his five minutes opening statement to be followed by the negative Osiris Isis who will follow with his five minutes. So both of you can keep your hands up if you want so that the, uh, you will be able to go after the first one finishes and I introduce you for the next uh, portion of the, uh, the debate itself. So straight path, you are number one. Go ahead with your opening statement. Mike is free. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. It's very good to be with everyone. Mic check, please. Good? All right, wonderful, wonderful. The subject of this afternoon or this evening's debate, wherever you are in the world, is Adam and Eve were created by God. Adam and Eve were created by God. This subject is basically a debate over the origins of the world, the origins of the universe. Now, we Muslims assert that the origins of the universe, the origins of time and space, were created by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Not just Muslims assert this, Christians assert this, Jewish people assert this, and many, many people who profess a belief in a deity assert this. Now, I will argue in this debate, it's not only logical to believe this, but it is the only plausible argument to believe such a notion. My hopes in, in this debate is to illustrate why there needs to be a creator. Now, I'm not here to def necessarily defend that creator, Allah, because my opponent is an atheist. For him, there is no creator. There is no prime mover. So, I want to start off on square one with my opponent. In this debate, it's my hopes that my opponent will explain to the room and to everyone here that if there is no Adam and Eve, there is no God, I would like to know where matter and energy came from, since matter and energy are material and they cannot create themselves. This is something that my opponent needs to explain my opponent needs to explain the origin of the universe if there is no God. My opponent needs to explain, if he is arguing about the theory of evolution, why the theory of, evolu of evolution is more plausible to believe than the story of Adam and Eve and Allah. It is my hope that my opponent will help educate and enlighten us in the room. I, I have debated many atheists over the years and I have never received such a response. To, today, my overview is I will be arguing that the existence of God is not only mathematically plausible, but just plausible from a realistic standpoint, quite frankly. Therefore, I just want to conclude my introduction by thanking my opponent, Osiris Isis, for being here, thanking the room, 
thanking you, Abdul Wadud, for hosting us. I hope it is a spirited debate, and I hope both sides will learn. Um, thank you very much. Mike is free. Okay, with this uh, opening statement now, we present Osiris Isis. Mike is yours, Osiris. Okay, well, thank you very much. <clears throat> First of all, <laughs> I, I have never said, I do not say there is no God. I do say there is no, I see, I see no evidence for a God, and I see no need for a God. But that is not, that's different than saying there's absolutely no God. If I had to say percentage-wise, is there, is there a God or is there, is there a God or is there not a God? I'd say probably 99% no God. But I couldn't say 100% because I don't know. And I don't think anyone else in the room knows either. But I, I'm content to say I'm not here to try to disprove God. And if you believe that a that it took a god to create the universe and to, and everything in it, well, we know that everything started from the Big Bang. But if you so that's where that's where I'm I'm not here to argue I'm not here to debate science with you I'm not here to debate science I'm here to debate did God is it possible that God created the first two human beings that's 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 the debate. And if you're going to say God did it, then, you, then you're going to have to say which God did it. Is, was it the, Egyptian, the God of the ancient Egyptians? Was it the God of the Assyrians? Was it the God of the Celts? Was it the God of the Romans? The Greeks? The Persians? The Chinese? The, the Indians? There was a lot of gods. So if God did create the universe, then you have to. It can't just be the God that you choose. You just you choose your own God. But there were a lot of gods out there to choose from. So uh, I'm not here to debate is there is there or is there not a God. That's not my source. I'm here to debate: is it possible that a God created Adam and Eve? That's my and I I, I attempt to disprove that. Thank you. Next on the mic. Thank you, Osiris. Now for his presentation, we present a straight path to present his case for uh, God, uh, sorry, Adam and Eve were created by God. Go ahead, straight path, my is yours. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Well, thank you very much. Okay, so. The story of Adam and Eve come from the Torah, the Bible, the Christian Bible, and the Quran. The reason why we believe in Adam and Eve, quite frankly, is because we believe in the Quran and Allah. Now, I'm a bit confused, to be honest, about what my opponent just uttered on the microphone. My opponent said he never said that God doesn't exist. I was under the impression my opponent was an atheist and doesn't believe in God. So this is how I crafted my, my, um, my arguments based on the notion that my opponent doesn't believe in God. So if my opponent believes in God, great. I think I've won half of the debate already. So I'm not sure. So in his uh, rebuttal against me, I would like to know if he is a believer in God or not, So, because I'm confused, quite frankly. Secondly, okay, so if there is no Adam and Eve, such as my opponent claims, or I think he claims, there, for the Muslims, for us, if there is no Adam and Eve, then that would, that would um, show there would be an error in the Quran. And if there's an error in the Quran, that would show that Allah is in the author. And if Allah is in the author, we can conclude that the God that we believe in is false, if there is no Adam and Eve. Therefore, let's, let's presume... Let's presume then Osiris is right. Let's assume that there is no Adam and Eve. Logically, if there's no Adam and Eve, theoretically, the God that we, the God that we believe in is false. Therefore, Osiris would 
give a alternate response. And I would love to hear his alternate response to, if there's no Adam and Eve, how did the origin of life originate? Therefore, since I have not heard his alternate response, um, I'm going to assume his position is that of many atheistic, agnostic scientists, that evolution is the, is the source of the origin of life. That is, there is no God, evolution alone can do it. Evolution alone is, comp is responsible for the complexity of life. So this is what I want to talk about for the next 13 minutes. I want to talk about the theory of evolution, whether evolution alone, no Adam and Eve, no God, nobody did it, simple evolution. Is it possible? Well, let's first understand what evolution is. Evolution is the belief that a species can uh, evolve over ions uh, long periods of time based on two key things, genetic mutation and natural selection. Now keep in mind, ladies and gentlemen, Charles Darwin knew nothing about genetic mutation. He simply believed that evolution relied simply on the ability for a species to adapt. And it's true that Adaptation alone is responsible for all the variations of life. It would disagree with every scientist under the sun. No scientist under the sun believes that adaptation alone is responsible for the origin of life or for the complexity of life. Therefore, genetic mutation has also been inserted. Now, some, some famous evolutionists, such as H.J. Muller, who is an expert on genetic mutation, actually won the Nobel Peace Prize for it, has stated that genetic mutation, 99% of it, is harmful. So, 99% of genetic mutation is harmful, yet evolution is the, uh, is, the, is the answer for the complexity of life. Ernest Mayer, also an evolutionist, quote, Consider it is a cons quote. It says it is a considerable strain on one's credulity to assume that finely balanced systems such as sense organs can be improved by random mutations. So Ernest Meyer would say that something as complicated as the human eye can you cannot have achieved it by random mutations. These guys are not Muslims, ladies and gentlemen. These guys are evolutionists. They hold the position Osiris holds. Finally, Julian Huxley said, to get a horse, the DNA to line up to, to get a horse would be a it would be 1,000 to 10 to the to 10 to the sixth, which is a million. So 1,000 to the 1 million power. Therefore, if you were to write that on a, on a piece of paper, that would you would need 15 pieces of paper uh, in order to just write the, um, the number of zeros to get a horse. And our opponent wants to believe that it was not created by a god. He wants us to believe that evolution alone could create that horse. Or, 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 could, or the horse could get its, acquire its complexity from, uh, just from evolution alone. So, I want to know from my opponent... How can the most famous evolutionists, include the one that I just stated, H.J. Mueller, who says that 99% of mutations are harmful, how could evolution get you to explain the complexity of the human mind, or the complexity of the human being? You know, folks, we are talking about things that are so complicated that none of us, none of us can comprehend what we say. You know, we throw words around like the human brain, but none of us can really comprehend what the human brain is, how complicated the human brain is. Charles Darwin, who I'm sure is Osiris' hero, the prophet of evolution, says that in his book, Origin of Species, says, I became sick when I thought about how the complexity of the eye could have evolved to propose that the eye could have been formed merely by natural selection, I freely confess, is absurd in the highest possible degree. So I'm running out of time, and I, I, I just want to go over just 
if there is no God, there is no God, which, and which of my opponent, I feel, is dancing around. He's saying, now there could be a God or this and that. But if my opponent denies the existence of Adam and Eve, he's calling our God false. So, if my opponent believes in God, if I would like my opponent to test if he believes in God. Because if my opponent believes in God, then I can throw away half of what I have prepared because I've, I've won half of the debate. But if he doesn't believe in God, I need to know. Therefore, I need to know. Anyway, if the earth were just a little bit closer or farther away from the sun, life would be impossible. If the earth were tilted 23 degrees on its axis, huge mountains of ice would pile up from water vapor of the ocean. If the, if the earth revolves, I'm sorry, the earth revolves at a speed of a thousand miles per hour. If it revolved at just a factor 10 less, night and day would increase 10 times in duration and plants would be scorched. If the moon were a bit closer to the earth, the tide would flood in all the lands, including the high mountains. If the oceans were deeper, CO2 would be absorbed and no plants could exist. If the atmosphere were thinner, millions of mediators would which are burned up daily in the air would fall on the earth and cause limitless de devastation. While most substances contract when they freeze, water miraculously expands, which makes ice float on the top, and it allows the fish to survive till today. No scientist can explain this. So, ladies and gentlemen, I just want to conclude my presentation by just simply talking about the eye. The eye alone, in an, in an embryo's eye, not even, a, not even an adult's eye, in an embryo's eye, there are one million nerve endings which form the optic nerve. It's the nerve that connects the eye to the brain. And these nerve endings are so vast that if you mapped it, the entire world's telephone cable system would only be a fraction of it. It has no designer, according to Osiris. Well, at least that's what I, I thought. I thought my opponent was an atheist. Now my opponent is saying he may believe in God. So again, I'm still not certain on his belief. But if Osiris, for, uh, for my belief, if there is no Adam and Eve, if there is no Adam and Eve, then for us, our God is false. Therefore, I would like to know from my opponent if he concludes that there is no Adam and Eve. I would like to know his explanation for the origin of life. Thank you very much. Mike is free. Uh, thank you very much. I can assure you, beyond the shadow of the slightest doubt, there was no Adam and Eve. And I will prove it. To my, maybe not to your satisfaction, but to the scientific world's satisfaction. Now, uh, evolution, if evolution is true, and it, abs and it absolutely is true, it's a proven fact through, like you said, it's been proven through genetics. And if evolution is true, which it is, then, then Adam and Eve is nothing more than a mythic fairy tale or mythic story from the, from the Torah. It's just another creation story. That's all it is. It's one more creation story. And I, I don't, I, I don't care what sources you quote from. You can quote from the, you can quote from your, the, the Quran. That's fine. Uh, will that, will that be factual information for me? No, it will not. Any more than if a Christian is trying to quote something from the Bible or a Jew from the Torah, would I accept that as factual information? No, I would not. As far as the, the origin of life, ev evolution has nothing to do with the origin of life. Evolution cannot prove or it does not try to disprove uh, prove the origin of life. As far as I know, no one kn so far knows the origin of life on this planet. No one. So it, you can forget about that. I don't know how life evolved on this planet. I, I don't know of any sciences. No, that doesn't mean that we will never know. But as of right now, we do not know how life originated on this planet. One hypothesis is aeobiogenesis, whereby it spontaneously uh, 
had a spontaneous origin on the on the planet. And that's a hypothesis. It's not a theory. It's only a hypothesis. It's not a proven. If it ever becomes a theory, then it will be true. But right now, it's just a hypothesis. Human beings are here, and everything on the planet are here natural through evolution, through natural selection. It's not. It's not an accident. Evolution is has has no gold. Evolution has absolutely no goals at all. There's 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 nothing out there. We weren't planned. We weren't planned three four million years ago to be here. We weren't planned to be here. We just evolved to be here. I'm gonna this from Wikipedia. This is from Wikipedia, and it it, it is a decent source. Adam and Eve are figures from primeval history. Of Genesis 1 through 11, the Bible's mythic history of the first years of the world's existence. That's from Wikipedia. Dr. Juana Dolansky, MythsEncyclopedia.com. The mythologies of many cultures include stories of the first couple, a man and a woman who were parents of the entire human race. In the Jewish, Christian, and Islamic tradition, the first parents were Adam and Eve. This comes from a from an encyclopedia on mythology. Many years ago, a British anthropologist visited Brazil and went up to the Amazon River and, and stayed with a very primitive Amazonian tribe. When he had been with them long enough and they became accustomed to him being, being there, he ate their food, adopted some of their customs, and they told him they wanted to take him to a very special place. They got into their boats and they went up the river to a beautiful waterfall area. When they arrived there, the priest or shaman of the tribe told the, uh, the anthropologist, we cannot stay here long because this is a very holy place. For it was here that the goddess, not the god, it was here that the goddess created the first two people. They, they went back into the village. They had a feast with dancing and chanting. And the anthropologist said, I have never felt any closer to the spirits, what might be the spiritually divine than I did with these, with these simple people. The point being, every culture on this planet has, create, have, has a creation myth, has a creation story. The Hebrew story in, as, as uh, brought forth in the Torah about Adam and Eve in the, in the Garden of Eden Placing it in, in present-day Iraq is just one more creation story. It's re the story I know the story is repeated in the Quran because I read it. It's the, the the story in the Quran is not as extensive as the one in the Torah, but the the, the story of a, the fact that Adam and Eve. In fact, I don't. I as I recall, I don't. Re I don't recall Eve being mentioned in the in the Quran. I do remember Adam, but I, I could be mistaken. But I don't remember Eve even being mentioned. But uh, now this is from uh, this is from a Muslim, uh, supposedly scholar or historian, Reza Azian. In the, he, this is what he placed in the Washington Post. That Adam, it seems to me that Adam and Eve were, were punished not for disobeying God, but for trying to become gods. Perhaps then the myth, the myth is, is hiding a deeper truth. And this is from Reza, Azlan, Azlan, a Muslim who sees it as a myth. There is, there, how much time do I have left? Eight minutes, 30 seconds? That's a lot of time. <laughs> okay, and this is from, um, from the ancientorigins.net. Mitochondrial Eve 
in Africa, 99,000 to 135,000 years ago. All women trace back to this one woman through our DNA. Now, you, if you're going to have an Adam, if you're going to have an Eve, she's going to have to go back well beyond, well beyond 99,000 years. Because here's the mitochondria of Eve, and they prove this through DNA. That's where we all, it, it's, it's in all of our DNA. It's, it's in every woman. My, mitochondrial Eve, the DNA for mitochondrial Eve is still in every female on the planet. All males carry the Y chromosome, the, the atom in Africa. Approximately 135,000 years ago, all males traced back to this one through our DNA. Now, it wasn't that these two people got together and produced a child. It, only, it proves that the, the, the mitochondrial Eve and the Y chromosome male, their, their DNA survived. And that's what, that's, that's what is in every human being on the planet today. I guess I'll uh, I'll uh, relinquish the mic and I'll give it back to my uh, my my fine opponent. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Thank you for that, Osiris. Um, so I just have I think this is the rebuttal. I'm not really sure. Um, but so my opponent, he said a, a few things that you know just kind of struck me as interesting. He said that evolution says that there is no Adam and Eve. So I would like to know, which I don't think he has really, you know, done well, is how does evolution dismiss that Eve doesn't exist? So I really want him to really go into depth to explaining that. Um, he did throw out the notion of abiogenesis. I don't know how many of you in the room are familiar with abiogenesis, but basically it is the idea that life comes from non-life. So, um, my opponent is yet to answer whether he believes in God or not. I don't know why he's hiding this. I really would like to know. But, um, uh, no, the, the, the fact that he's bringing up abiogenesis gets me to believe that he does not doesn't believe in God at all at all there is no God because uh, a person who believes in God would not bring this up so a biogenesis is it possible well unfortunately for you Osiris uh, a famous scientist I, I, I mean I don't know if you drink milk maybe you've heard of him his name is Louis Pasteur proved a biogenesis is not true cannot be true and I don't really want to go into uh, his experiment and how he disproved a biogenesis but because it's just going to take up too much of my time. But I'm just going to, if you want to know, I would just have you Google uh, the uh, swan and flask and read about how he disproved abiogenesis. So abiogenesis is not true, period. That is scientifically proven. Secondly, my opponent keeps asserting about evolution, 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 evolution is the source of the origin of life. So... Again, I would like him to address this simple thing. If the scientists he believes in today, and I named one, state that 99% of genetic mutations are harmful, how can you get the complexity we have on life today? This is a fundamental problem. If there is no God, no Adam and Eve, and this all originated by evolution, how does 99% of genetic mutation being harmful help us achieve that? Is it logical or is it, is it plausible? For me, I don't think so. Not only do you run into problems on evolution, you just run into cosmological problems with this. For example, I just, in, in, my, in my opening statement, I read you I read you statements where it would be extremely difficult, extremely difficult for an entity, an, for um, 
for no entity, I'd rather, um, to create everything you see, in, not just in the world, but in, in the universe. For example, I read you that if the Earth were not tilted 23 degrees on its axis, huge mountains of ice would pile up from the water vapor of the oceans. Now, if there is no God, we really got lucky with this. We really, it has to be exactly 23 degrees. So there, so there has to be, there has to be like a mover. There has to be something involved. I, I, I stated to you, matter energy. You have to explain the origins of matter and energy. If there is no God, please, Osiris, I really would love to hear your explanation on what created matter and energy. Was it always there? How could something material be always there? Again, you really haven't answered any of my arguments. You, you honestly haven't answered a single one of my arguments that I br brought up. All you keep saying is evolution, evolution, evolution. Look, the reality of the situation is we can never be, prove anything 100%. Can you prove, Osiris, that you exist 100%? You cannot. This is philosophy. This is why <laughs> philosophy was invented, right? So... Nothing 100% can be proven. But we don't deal with this. We deal with plausibility and probability. The probability, Osiris, of no God, evolution only, and I don't know what created and th you know the, the universe, the probability that this song spontaneously came up on its own. Let's assume we believe what you believe that abiogenesis happened, that the earth and everything in it, and the universe and everything in it just spontaneously came into existence, and life just evolved on its own, I mean, the odds of that are, like, I mean, I, I, I mean the number of zeros that it would take to write on a piece of paper would probably be like 100 pieces of paper, more than 100 sheets of paper. <laughs> they are just so fundamentally slim. So... Just because we have different mythologies, Osiris, doesn't mean that Adam and Eve didn't exist. For example, if you look at it this way, suppose all the mythologies you read, maybe they have some truth in them. Sure, all the different religions have disagreements with each other. Sure. But we Muslims, we believe that a prophet was sent to every single nation in all of humanity. Therefore, seeing other creation accounts and seeing other cultures believe that two people, there was the first two people that started this whole life, you know, it would actually help us confirm the, our belief that just because they don't have a correct understanding of the nature of, 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 the nature of God or, um, you know, different things, Maybe that is a piece of revelation that didn't get corrupted from them. Look at it like that. Yeah, did you ever think about looking at it like that? Instead of just saying, oh, these cultures have different blah, 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 blah. The fact that there are different flood accounts in different cultures should tell you, hey, maybe some flood did happen, even though maybe the accounts differ. Maybe something did happen. You know, maybe something happened for these people to be reporting on something. So I would, I would, uh, I would argue that it would be more logical to think. Of it. So I would just like to conclude that it is not probable nor feasible to believe that evolution alone is the promised land. 99% of harmful genetic mutations is illogical, improbable, that it could account for the complexity of life. A, biogenesis has been disproven by Louis Pasteur. And my opponent fails, again, to explain how evolution can immediately disqualify Adam and Eve. I would love to hear what he has to say about that. I would also like to conclude this by saying that I really would like to hear what my opponent believes on the nature of God. He has, again, hid this from us 
and I would like to know if he believes in a God to help me debate, <laughs> to help the room understand exactly where he is driving at. We would like to know, Osiris, do you believe in God? And we would like to know this, because if you do believe in God, we would like to know which God you believe in to help facilitate uh, the rest of this debate. Thank you so much for listening. I release the mic. Okay, let's get let's uh, let's settle this right now for that. No, I do not believe there is a God. No, I, I do not. There is a God. I don't believe there is a God. Does that mean that that that, have, that there being a God is impossible? No, I do not believe there is a God. I do not see any evidence for a God. I do not see any need for a God. That's so I hope that I hope you understand that now. And as far as evolution, evolution has nothing to do with the origin of life on this planet. Nothing. All evolution d talks about has how life, once it was here, how it evolved on this planet, not how it began. Evolution tells tells the story of how it evolved, not how it began. Nobody knows how it began. You don't know. And I don't know. And nobody in the room knows. Nobody on the planet knows yet. But that doesn't mean that someday science will not determine how life began on this planet. And when they do, when they do that, then all these religions are just, they'll go into the dustbin of history. Most of them are already in the dustbin of history, as you're well aware. Where are, the, where, where are all these ancient religions that we read about in, 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 the, in the history books? They're all gone. And there was a time when people by the, by the hundreds of thousands believed in all these gods, sincerely. But these gods are gone because we see that they're nothing more than mythic stories. As far as I'm concerned, the stories in the Torah, the Bible, and the Quran are, are just a repetition of, of mythic stories. That's all they are to me. <clears throat> Have you ever, and you, you said, uh, what, you, what you believe, just because you believe something, that's not evidence. I don't, I don't it makes no difference to me if, if, uh, if, if the, whole, the whole Christian world, the whole Islamic world, the whole Jewish world believes something. That's not evidence. That's belief. That's not evidence. If, if you have if you have evidence, you haven't presented any evidence. You give you give me these. You give me a lot of maybes and should should maybe hope to be it should be, but you've given me no evidence for, an, for for not for an Adam and Eve. You've tried to you you've tried to dance around science about how the world began and 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 we couldn't have possibly done this or that. Well, the, the simple truth is we are here. The animals here. And 99% of every creature that ever evolved on this planet is gone. It's extinct. But we know they were here because we have fossil evidence that we're here. So if this God created all these wonderful animals and 99% of them are gone, what was the point? What was the point of this God doing away with 99% of, of, the, of the life that he created on this planet? It makes no sense. It makes no sense at all. And you talk about if the moon was just further away or closer away. In the beginning, the, the moon was 25 times closer to the earth than it is now. Look, Google that. Anybody in the room, Google it. You can, but there weren't any humans here. There, weren't any, there was no life here when that happened. There was no life. Not at all. Google that. If you want to really know something, you can Google it. There, there is, there is a place you can go to find out anything you want to know. You can do it on an iPhone. You can do it on your computer. But you're not going to, you're not going to reach scientific truth by reading, by reading ancient books. You're not going to get the truth from there. Has any of you ever read the Enuma, the Enuma Elish? It's a Babylonian creation myth recorded on seven clay tablets of about 1,000 line. It describes the war between the god Marduk and the goddess Tiamat. Marduk defeats Tiamat about 1100 BCE. Story, no doubt, is much, much older. From Tiamat's eyes, 
Marduk creates the, the Tigris and the Euphrates River. From her body he creates the heavens and the earth. From the, uh, and from the remains of the lesser gods who supported Tiamat in the, in the war with Marduk, Marduk creates the human the human race and everything on the all, everything on the earth. Another creation story. Another creation story. There's creation stories all over this planet, and if you think that the story in the book of in in the book of Genesis is is true, then how about all these other other cultures that have also have a very similar creation story just because it's in the Torah doesn't mean it's, it's true it's, it's that's just the, that's just the Hebrew story in the north in the north creation story God creates the first two people the first two human beings out of driftwood on, on the beach Did, do, do, do I believe that God created the first two people out of driftwood on the beach of course I don't don't either but you're prepared to believe that God created the first two people out of some dust in the Garden of Eden be it in be it in Iraq or be it somewhere up in the sky. Oh, and then from the Celtic myth, in the Celtic myth where the sea meets the land, a mare was born. The mare's name was Iotia. Iotia gave birth to the first gods, Sununus. The first two made it and created the other gods. The gods created the first humans and animals. can Google it. I'm going to give up the mic and my opponent can go along. But let, let, let me say once again, I do not believe there is a God. I do not believe there is a God. That does not mean there is no God. I don't believe there is a God. Next, your mic. Well, that's about the only question you've answered for my points. Thank you so much for answering that. Okay, since we know you do not believe in God, um, okay, so I'm at my conclusion. So I'm going to conclude the following then. So it, to wrap it up, folks, ladies and gentlemen, you, I have made a series of points. And, you know, but the, the, what I was trying to illustrate is I was, I was granting my opponent or my counterpart the benefit of the doubt by saying, let's say evolution is true. Let's say it's true. Is it, um, I was trying to get him to see that evolution with no creator is simply not possible because it's it's not possible because it's not plausible 99 percent of genetic mutations are harmful my opponent has not addressed this my opponent has failed to explain how evolution with no creator can get you the, the complexity we have today my opponent throughout this debate has simply went on to say Evolution is true. There's many, many different gods. Man Look, we know there are many, many different gods. The Quran tells us there are, there are false gods. We know this, sir. You don't have to tell us that there are many different gods. You don't have to tell us that there are many different creation stories. We know that. Many, creation, many different creation stories, quite frankly, don't explain anything, sir. It just simply means that those people believe that there, that there had to be a different... Uh, realm that exists that isn't physical to explain how we are created. That's all those people simply believed. And we believe that, you know, they they came up with a story. They came up, they came up with a story. So, at least though those people recognized that you can't get to the complexity of life with a physical explanation. And how do I know that? How do I know that the complexity of life, your brain, how do I know that nothing can explain how complicated your brain is? Science we have discovered today with the 99% genetic mutations being harmful, with the disproven uh, abiogenesis theory, um, with 
the fine-tuning arguments that I have presented, I, I mean, have clearly shown that. They've clearly shown that three evolutionists that I have, um, that I have talked about today, clearly sh sh I've shown with math, math, mathematics, that you cannot, you cannot prove the, how the universe was created, and you cannot uh, prove the complexity of life based on anything physical. All you have is just, just concepts. So you have failed to, dis to, to prove to the room that evolution disproves God. You have failed to prove to the room that evolution disproves the story of Adam and Eve. You, you really honestly haven't really proved anything. Uh, um, and that's, that's kind of sad, to be honest with you. I was really looking forward to this debate. So I will give you, you know, maybe one more chance. I know you have very little time to do it, but I would just simply like to know how, I mean, just this, at least if you can just talk about this. How does 99% genetic mutation being harmful give you the complexity of the human brain? Is that plausible? I would like that, that answer at least. Is it plausible to believe that 99% genetic mutation being harmful can get you something as complex as the human brain? That's all I would like to know from you because you have such limited time. Um, and that, I mean, that's, that's basically all I have. So I would just like to thank, you know, the room, and I would like to thank my uh, counterpart, Osiris, for, um, for joining us in, t in today's debate. And um, if anything I've said um, that's uh, error-filled, it's, it's from me. And if anything, you know, uh, beneficial I've said, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Assalamu alaikum. Thank you. Uh, well, I tell you, it, it's like... The, Lawrence Krauss responded to, to Ham, Hamza in a debate in London. It's, abs it's very difficult to respond to absolute nonsense. That's what Lawrence Krauss said when, after Hamza had made his long spiel. It's very difficult to respond to absolute nonsense. You, you keep bringing up the brain and all this stuff, but the simple truth is human beings have been here for over 100,000 years. Modern human beings have been here. And there's no place. You tell me, you cannot tell me, I guarantee you beyond the shadow of any doubt, you cannot tell me where Adam and Eve fits in the history of the human race that we know, not we think, that we know. There's no place in human history to plot down an Adam and Eve. That's absolute nonsense. And any historian, any archaeologist, any paleontologist will tell you that's nonsense. The fact that you believe it, that doesn't, just because you believe something, just because you've been taught this stuff since you were a child, that doesn't mean it's true. That just means you be, that's, that's what you believe, that's what you've been taught. That, that, it doesn't make sense. The amount of DNA we share with every creature on this planet shows how close we are related. The, the amount of DNA we share with a chimpanzee shows that we are very close cousins to a chimpanzee. Be it animal, reptile, fish, plant, or bacteria, humans and chimpanzees, chimpanzees share a common ancestor from about three million years ago. Three million years ago. I don't think Adam was here three million years ago. This was a common ancestor we share. To believe that, that to believe that God created two people in a garden and set them on this earth, and Adam was, and they had a couple of kids, and and uh, Cain was a farmer, and Abel, and Abel was a was a sheep herder, was a herder, a keeper, a keeper of flocks. And they did they didn't even learn to de domesticate animals until out between 10,000 and 8,000 BCE. So he couldn't have, when was this, you, you tell me, it's not possible. The story is absolutely childlike. It's a childlike fairy tale. If you go before any scientific convention and, and, and they, they, will, they will die laughing at this stuff. They will die laughing. It doesn't make sense. And you see, if you believe in evolution, if, if you see, if you told me, you said on the mic, if evolution is true and there is no Adam and Eve, then your God, then your religion is absolutely false. 
you have hung your you have hung your religion out on a very very sinking peg because evolution is taught in every major secular university science department on this planet every one if you can you you come to the mic you, I want you to name me one just one major secular university that teaches that Darwin was wrong evolution is not true if you can do that you win the argument but if you can't you lose next okay thank you very much the debaters uh, Osiris uh, Isis and the straight part welcome brothers and sisters to the chat room friends of the chat room a cordial welcome we are now into the question and answer period we would like to um, alternate the questions to the various to the different uh, debaters I will ask the first question <coughs> excuse me I will ask the first question to Osiris so I'm on the mic already the person who is going to ask the first question to straight part raise your hand please just raise your hand and uh, who wants to ask a question to a straight part just raise your hand and you will be undotted okay thank you very much then the next person who's going to ask a question to Osiris raise your hand now Nobody wants to ask a question to Osiris. Come on. <laughs> yeah, that no, no, hold on, no, hold on. I'm going to ask the first question to Osiris after I get all the hands up. I want to get the hands up in the room. Uh, hold on, dear brother Mahir. Uh, hold on, dear brother Mahir. We still have the, date, uh, the debate continuing. Um, we want to hear answers from Osiris and Street Part but I want to alternate the questions I want to alternate the questions I want those who want to ask questions with their hands up before I ask my question so since my question will be to Osiris I will pose it in a moment we have Ibn Saleh is going to ask to a question to um, the straight part then we have Kamodi is going to ask a question to Osiris then Uban Ninja is going to ask a question to um, Osiris and so on. Who is now? A couple more hands. All right. That the uh, the uh, debaters get a question each, uh, and we are alternating the questions. So my question to you, Osiris, and please let him wait, wait for the Osiris to answer. Those of you who have your hands up. My question to Osiris is this, Osiris. If you're at the airport and you see a 747, this huge complex uh, uh, equipment uh, at the airport, and you see it just takes off and flies, 